In this tutorial, we will see how to perform the calculations related to the production economic order quantity model. Note that this tutorial builds off of the basic EOQ tutorial, so be sure to watch that tutorial first. The basic EOQ model assumes that you receive your shipment all at once. That is, if you order 500, after the lead time, a truck pulls up to your receiving dock and unloads all 500. That makes sense. The vendor would prefer to pay for one shipment and send them to you all at once. If you are producing the components yourself, that is not how things would likely work. There's no point in holding the items on one side of the factory until all 500 have been made before moving them to the other side of the factory. Rather, they are either delivered as they are made or in smaller batches that work with a forklift, cart, or other conveyance method. In other words, they are delivered gradually. This model is known by various names. They include Production EOQ, Economic Production Quantity or EPQ, and Gradual Delivery EOQ. All of these names refer to the same model. Since the items come in gradually and we can start using them before they all arrive, maximum inventory is lower. Since maximum inventory is lower, average inventory is lower. With lower average inventory, inventory holding costs are lower. Since ordering costs do not change, annual inventory cost and annual ordering cost are out of balance. That means costs are not minimized. To address this, we place a larger order. That does two things. First, it raises average inventory and therefore annual inventory costs. Second, it reduces the number of orders we place, lowering annual ordering costs. That brings the cost back into balance and that minimizes costs. The first part of the production EOQ formula is identical to the basic EOQ formula. Only, we multiply it times a second term. That term is the square root of the production rate divided by the production rate minus the usage rate. Since that number is larger than 1, it raises the economic order quantity as discussed earlier. Note that the production and usage are usually stated as a daily rate. However, any unit of time will work as long as they are both stated using the same unit. Maximum inventory level is the economic order quantity divided by the production rate quantity times the production rate minus the usage rate. Note that the maximum inventory level will always be less than Q. Also note that the maximum inventory level was not discussed in the basic EOQ model, but it equals Q in that model. With the basic EOQ model, average inventory was just the maximum inventory level of Q divided by 2. Likewise, here, average inventory is the maximum inventory level I sub max divided by 2. Total stocking cost is calculated using the same basic approach, only with the average inventory of I sub max divided by 2 replacing Q divided by 2. Cycle time is Q divided by the usage rate. Run time is Q divided by the production rate. A small local brewery makes its own cans for its craft made beer. Annual demand is 120,000 cans. It costs $550 to set up the line to make the cans. The line can produce 1,500 cans a day and the brewery uses 480 cans a day. It costs 20 cents to hold a can in inventory for one year. Using this information, find the optimal run size, minimal total annual stocking cost, cycle time for the optimal run size, and the run time. Plugging in the annual demand of $120,000, setup cost of $550, holding cost of $0.20, cents, daily production of $1,500, and daily usage of $480 gives us an economic order quantity of $31,154. Note that without the adjustment of the square root of daily production over daily production minus usage, the order quantity would have been $25,690. So, you can see how the adjustment raises the order quantity as discussed earlier. Using the Q value of 31,154, the daily production of 1,500, and the daily usage of 480 gives us a maximum inventory of 21,185. That maximum inventory divided by 2 gives us an average inventory of 10,592.5. Plugging in the maximum inventory of 21,185, holding cost of 20 cents, annual demand of 120,000, order quantity of 31,154, and order cost of $550 gives us a total annual stocking cost of $4,237. Notice that the total annual holding cost equals total annual order cost. The order quantity of 31,154 divided by the usage rate of 480 gives us a cycle time of 64.90. What that means is that each order will last production almost 65 working days. Finally, the order quantity 31,154 divided by the daily production rate of 1,500 gives us a run time of 20.77. What that means is that it takes almost 21 working days to produce each order. A snack company makes its own cellophane wrappers for the peanuts it sells to a regional airline. 
Annual demand is 1.8 million wrappers. It costs $1,000 to set up the line to make the wrappers. The line can produce 40,000 wrappers a day and the factory uses 6,000 wrappers a day. It costs three cents to hold a wrapper in inventory for one year. Using this information, find the optimal run size, minimum total annual stocking cost, cycle time for the optimal run size, and the run time. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. Plugging in the values gives us an optimal order quantity of 375,735. The maximum inventory is 319,374 with an average inventory of 159,687. The total annual stocking cost is $9,581. An order lasts almost 63 days and takes a little over 9 days to produce. If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.